Andrew Huberman is the world's most famous neuroscientist, and he's also one of the biggest public advocates for the brain benefits of cold plunging. And I find this fascinating because I know you and I are both kind of obsessed with ice baths and cold, cold plunges. Yeah. Huberman has this one go-to study that he loves to talk about on podcasts related to cold plunging. It shows a 250% increase in dopamine, or 2 to 3x. I've been going deep into that literature around cold and what's really known about cold thermogenesis and not known. A study that was published in the European Journal of Physiology that showed these huge increases in dopamine, 2 to 3x above baseline. The biggest effect is a big increase, 2.5x increase in dopamine that lasts for several hours. And then the fact that the dopamine increases are huge and long lasting. I mean, they're like 2.5 X increases creates that long arc of dopamine. The increases in this case are lasting many hours, two to four to even six hours. Arc of dopamine release that's quite long lasting. There's no question. I mean, what you can like feel it in your body. While I'm a genuine fan of Andrew Huberman, I'm gonna show you that there's a huge flaw in this study that he talks about so frequently and that the research behind cold plunging and dopamine brain benefits are not as concrete as you might think, and definitely not as concrete as Huberman and his cold plunge sponsor would want you to believe. So this is the paper that he always talks about. You can see a long arc of dopamine that lasts for many hours. Now what you can also see is that these people stayed in the cold water for really, really long periods of time. Nobody is doing ice baths for this long, and this isn't even the key point. This study measures plasma concentrations of dopamine. This means dopamine that's in our blood plasma circulating around our peripheral nervous system. Why does this matter? Well, for dopamine to have these brain benefit effects, mental clarity, focus, and motivation that Andrew Huberman always talks about, it has to bind physically in the brain it doesn't have the same effects in the periphery. You might be thinking then, doesn't the dopamine just go from the periphery into the brain? And the answer to that is no. Dopamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is a physical wall that separates the peripheral nervous system from the central nervous system. So dopamine that's in the periphery stays in the periphery. It cannot enter the brain. This is a critical point. This means that the main study that Andrew Huberman has spoke about on countless podcasts as the single best data point supporting the brain benefits of cold plunging is not even remotely relevant to the benefits that he speaks about. The effects of dopamine in the peripheral nervous system are completely different. They're not focused, they're not motivation, or any of those brain benefits that everybody wants. They're actually related to peeing, which is way less epic. And I'm not the only one that spotted this. A bunch of neuroscientists on X were going hell to leather on Andrew Huberman and Dr. Ronja Patrick for making such a basic physiological mistake. Caltech neuroscientist called Dr. Stephen Quartz pointed out this mistake, and Ronja Patrick admitted it, that you cannot infer central nervous system dopamine, dopamine in the brain, to peripheral nervous system dopamine, which is circulating around the rest of our body. She admitted this mistake. She tried to link a number of papers which further supported her claims, but these got absolutely eviscerated from a number of different neuroscientists who were not having it. And this was the best piece of counter evidence that Dr. Patrick could provide to back up the clip that she was pushing. The fact is, is that the actual research that links brain dopamine and cold exposure is incredibly limited. I want to be very clear here, I'm not saying that cold showers and cold plunges aren't beneficial for our health. I personally think they feel great and I've been doing cold showers for a number of years. There's obviously a benefit in doing something difficult in building psychological resilience. But we just cannot say that they are beneficial for the reason that Andrew Huberman is flaunting and it's important to point that out. I think Dr. Mike has a really good take on this. Is a cold plunge good for you? If you like it, <laughs> if you like the challenge, but medically I'm never going to recommend to my patient ever in my life as a physician to go do a cold plunge. Why? Or like cryotherapy, isn't that like the same thing? Yeah, why? why? I'm asking you why. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why people are recommending it. There's no evidence to say it really does anything valuable. And it's expensive, it's time consuming. Most patients do not live in this world that they can afford to buy a tub, throw ice in it every day. Like it just, it's not about, this is the difference between people who are excited about information and are researchers versus someone who's a clinician and actually sees patients and the hard time they're having in their everyday lives. And then I'm gonna come in there and be like, oh, in my fancy suit, I'm gonna tell you to get a cold plunge. And if you do it for three minutes and not three minutes, 13.4 seconds, you fail. It's not real. There's no evidence. It doesn't exist. 
this seems right to me. There's obviously psychological benefits from doing it. And if you like doing it, keep doing it. But again, it's incredibly important for proper scientific discourse that these mistakes are pointed out. Huberman is financially benefiting from spreading really bad misinformation, a basic physiological flaw which undermines his point completely. A future study might concretely prove that dopamine does increase the brain in related to cold showers or cold plunging, but this is just not something that we can say at the moment. The data simply does not exist. Exist. If you enjoyed this video and support the mission I'm on to correct neuroscience misinformation, then subscribe to the channel and follow the Giant Shoulder podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I have a number of different podcasts coming up with genuinely great neuroscientists who don't make extreme claims in order to sell you things. Thank you so much for watching.